And next, I would like to introduce Thea Flowers. Thea is a creative technologist and open source advocate. It's her mission in life to empower creativity through hardware, software, writing, and music. Thank you so much. Hello. Oh, sorry. Bonjour. <laughs> Forgot where we were. My bad. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Thea, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Voron community, and I'm going to give you a very small look into the really interesting stuff that's going on out there. So, by show of hands, how many people know what Voron is? Okay, that's like half the room. Cool. I can just leave. Y'all ask those people about it. And we're good. All right. OK, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more. Fine. OK, before we start, I want to say that this brief talk doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of all the really, really neat stuff going on in Voron. I really just hope that it encourages you to take a closer look to what's going on. Um, so let's dive in. So for the half of the room that didn't raise their hand and just think that I'm saying the element Boron funny, um, what is the Voron? What is that? Um, well, Voron Design has created an incredible set of high performance, no compromise 3D printers. But there's a catch. You can't buy a Voron. You have to build your Voron. And they don't, they don't sell anything. There's no printers to buy. You can go to their website. It's their website. It's great. But um, no printers to buy. You see, they're completely open source hardware in that they give you the bill of materials and the instructions on how to put it together, and uh, the rest is up to you. Um, as, uh, as you might imagine, in the past, this was a very frustrating experience for people because you had to look at this spreadsheet and then you had to go and tr track down all these parts yourself. Um, and that was not fun for most people. Um, there are some people out there that really enjoy this kind of thing. Um, I'm not one of them. I don't know many people that are. So that wasn't great, but that's how the, the Voron community bootstrapped itself. These days, that's rarely done. You rarely go out and source every part yourself. Instead, you can literally type into Google Voron and you can find kits and completely assembled printers for sale. And none of them are for sale by Voron. How does that work, right? That seems sketchy, right? Well, it turns out that there are a bunch of wonderful vendors out there who coexist in a very interesting way to provide the Voron community and the Voron users with the parts, the kits, and the fully built things, and support, and all kinds of cool stuff. It's a really vibrant community. Um, and it's really interesting that they're complementary and they're not like cutthroat, capitalist, com like competitive, right? Some vendors are going to focus on that budget, like, you know, pay us $300, we'll send you a parts kit that is not going to be the greatest, and you know that. But you'll get a printer together, and then you can start doing things from there, you know? Not everybody wants to spend $2,000 on a printer. Uh, but there's other vendors who are like, you want a carbon fiber printer arm? We got you. You want a hardened steel hot end that can heat up to 600 Celsius? We got you. So they can kind of can hang out together. Everybody, everybody's cool, right? This is an interesting example of real world peer production. It's a big, men, a big tent mentality, not a big mint mentality, sorry. I get my words mixed up sometimes. Um, peer production is this way of producing goods that relies on self-organizing, collaborative, largely distributed communities of individuals and organizations. You might be familiar with some popular examples of peer production like Wikipedia and Linux. Um, both of those are really, really good examples. There are a lot of academic sort of opinions on peer production. Um, if you look it up on Wikipedia, that aforementioned peer production project, um, you'll see like some, some very different definitions. Um, so it's hard to like pinpoint 
real world real world examples very well but it's it's easily contrasted with those very typical types of production where you have one company that controls all the rights and the means for production and produces all the goods and makes all the money from it um, versus peer production where it's distributed it flips it on its head and the rights and means of production are spread out over a participatory community so here's an easy example Voron has the print it forward program this is such a cool thing so you remember that that list that spreadsheet the bomb earlier well that's all a lot of nice mechanical off-the-shelf parts but you also need a bunch of 3d printed parts to build the 3d printer which is a problem if you don't already have a 3d printer this is the bootstrap paradox for 3d printing so the Voron community devised this incredible scheme called Print It Forward, where people who already have a machine, who have been vetted by the community, will print the parts that you need for your machine. They'll even print it in the color that you want, and they'll print it for you at cost. And basically, you fill out this form, and it goes into a spreadsheet, and then someone usually close by to you will find, like, pick out the ones they want to make. They'll make them, and they'll send them to you. It's really cool. Um, this is how most people build their first Voron. They get a, a PIF, Print It Forward, set of parts. Um, and it's, it's really cool. Now, that's a clear example of peer production, but what's not quite as clear cut is the vendors, right? There's money involved, and not just pay for the part, the cost of this, you know, plastic. It's, I need to eat and live. So, how, did that, how does that work? Well, the key aspects of peer production are there, right? They're distributed, they're specialized, they're self-organized, and they actually need to participate in the community to be successful. Um, a good example, a good case study, was this thing called Voron Tap. It's a really interesting way to do um, Z-probing, so to figure out where the printer bed is so that it could properly put plastic down on the bed. Because if, if that's not right, things go wrong. That's how you get spaghetti. Um, yeah, so the community designed this really cool modification for the Z probe called Voron Tap. People got really excited about it, like really excited about it. And one vendor kind of jumped the gun. They said, hey, we're gonna make an aluminum version because you made a 3D printed version, that's cool and all, but aluminum, right? Everybody loves aluminum. Um, unfortunately, the vendor didn't talk to the developers. So when they adapted the design for aluminum, they missed some key aspects. Um, and it didn't quite work the way that it should. And the problem is that people were buying this unaware that the development team didn't really have any feedback into it. And then people were running into issues. And then they were talking to the development team that never had any input into this particular version of Voron Tap. Um, and that sucks, right? That's not great. But there's a silver lining. Because of this, the vendor ended up actually reaching out to developers and having a conversation. Obviously, the order there is not ideal. We would want it to be the other way around. But by doing that, they actually encouraged another vendor that was in the process of developing an aluminum version of, of TAP, a different aluminum version, and they reached out and they got feedback. In the end, we ended up with version two of this and version two of the other one that were great that incorporated the feedback from the development team and the vendors from their feedback in terms of manufacturability and it ended up with a much better result for everyone involved so yeah that's pretty neat right it's a good example of like self-organizing self-governing sounds like peer production to me that's how it keeps things healthy right and this is this is v2 by the way uh it it, it comes in red now that's cool. So all this is to say is that it's very easy to look at people who are selling stuff based on open source as like just people who are trying to, to make profit. But vendors can be an essential part of your ecosystem. Community means everyone. And by working with your vendors and having your vendors work with you, you can actually amplify the impact of your project. This creates a virtuous cycle, right? It significantly lowers the barrier of entry for people when there are multiple options for them to get involved in your project. The Voron 
um, vendors, that's a hard thing to say, like right after each other, Warren vendors, Warren vendors. Warren. Anyways, um, they, they, they have brought down the cost of getting a Voron drastically. When it first started and you had to get all those parts yourself, it was the overhead of shipping every single one of them, the overhead of finding them, and then just the cost because they weren't very common. Now you can get complete part kits and it's so much less expensive and it's so much more approachable. They reduce the cost, they make it easier to acquire specialized components. You can get some of the nicest 3D printer beds for your Vorons now. Um, they provide supports to end users, so the design team doesn't have to constantly fill every support request. They support, sponsor, and organize community events, right? Like, this is awesome. That's a good thing. This is all good stuff. And what this exemplifies to me is the RepRap philosophy. Modern consumer 3D printers, including Voron and every other 3D printer, trace their origins back to the RepRap project. The RepRap project was this wild idea of a dream of democratizing and distributing the means of production by creating a machine that could create itself so that anyone could own it and anyone could make their stuff, right? That's awesome. That's, that's, that's what I just described with the Voron community. Anybody can make one and it can make itself. To me, the present day legacy of the Voron community is alive and well. Uh, sorry, the RefRap project is alive and well in the Voron community. They're creating innovative, high quality open source designs. They have a truly distributed collaborative ecosystem that provides physical goods that supports the community. And that impact is so large that it's felt way beyond that. Because similar and adjacent projects like Printers for Ants, Milo, which is a, um, a CNC mill, and Lumen PMP, which is a pick and place machine that you can see right here. All of these benefit from what the Voron ecosystem has done. They try to solve some of the similar problems. They have to tackle some similar obstacles to get their work done. And having access to a lot of that stuff that the Voron ecosystem already did is amazing. You can look at this pick and place machine and you'll see the aluminum extrusions, you'll see the stepper motors and everything that are, you'll, you'll find on a Voron. It's, it's amazing. I think that's really neat. So this is an example of viable peer production. No ecosystem is perfect. There's been issues, but this is a great example of empowered open source ecosystem. So everyone can, can succeed. With that, I would like to say that, of course, this didn't give you a complete picture into everything. I couldn't tell the complete tap story. It's very long. Um, but I'd like to thank the Voron design team and Maple, Maple Leaf Makers, a, a Canadian, unlike me, um, Fabrico and West 3D for their help. They let me ask them all kinds of really intrusive questions about how they work with other people. So shout out to them. Um, and yeah, thank you all for listening to me. Uh, if you're wondering who I am, that's who I am. I'm Thea. Um, you can find me on the internet and stuff like that, like um, at my website and on the Twitter. So yeah, awesome. Thank you all. <laughs>